Hi guys and welcome back to another video where today we're going to be predicting the scores of week 32 of this 2018-2019 Premier League season. Now last week of course it was the international break, namely uh, European yes. qualifying for the 2020 European Championships and we produced a video on that and in that video we went through our predictions for week 31 of the Premier League mm -hmm. season and we gave out the shout outs for, for that week and uh, fantasy football as well. But looking back at uh, our predictions for the uh, Euro qualifiers, where we, we in fact did seven predictions. Should we just have a quick recap on that, Nathan? Yep. So in that qualifying round, I had six points, which is six out of seven, which is pretty good in my opinion. I only got the Northern Ireland Belarus game wrong, so mm. that's good. Well done, yeah. I had 11 points overall. Um, I didn't get as many results correct as you, but I did have three perfect scores, and that was the Spain victory over Norway, which was two under Spain. I had the Wales 1-0 victory over Slovakia, and the Scotland victory away to San Marino, which ended 2-0. Looking in the comments section, top scorer from those international predictions was Jack Williams, and Jack came away with 10 points, which... You know, good score there, Jack. Uh, you didn't get 11 as me. I think that's the first time I've finished top scorer out of anyone yeah. this season. So uh, I'll have to try and do that in the Premier League as well this week. But the uh, last few weeks, uh, I've been terrible. Just to recap, though, Nathan, for the season in the Premier League's predictions, you're now on 203 points and I'm on 224 points. So I'm just 21 points ahead of you at the moment. But enough of that. Let's move on and make some predictions. So first up, we have the half 12 kickoff on Saturday between Fulham and Man City down at the cottage. Now, Fulham, terrible. Haven't won since January, I don't think. Just Scott Parker doesn't seem to be turning it round down there. They've been playing all right, but I can't see it happening. Man City doing the complete opposite, just winning everything at the moment. I'm going to throw a random number out here, and I'm going to say it's 5-0, honestly. 5-0, big five victory. Nil. Especially while well, Scott Parker is coming. He has He's tried to steady the ship. They are playing a lot better. They had that narrow defeat against Chelsea a few weeks ago, of course. So, And I think they, it was a narrow loss against Liverpool as well. Yeah, it was 2-1 as well. So, you know, not they're not getting overawed by, the, uh, by their opposition at the moment. However, they're playing Manchester City. Manchester City, a lot of their players have been on international duty. Of course, I think Jesus was in South America playing for Brazil and... You know, a lot of their team um, would have been on international duty. I think did De Bruyne play for Belgium? I'm not, I'm not sure, but uh, it, yeah, in this fixture, Man City, as you say, going to be too strong. I can see Fulham scoring though, and I'm going for a, a three-one victory to the Citizens in this match. Next up, we've got Brighton against Southampton. Now, Brighton. I think they've won their last two Premier League matches and in the previous fixture they beat Millwall, I believe, on penalties in the FA Cup quarterfinals. So coming up against a Southampton team who, who's been doing okay themselves recently, I think they've won two of the last three matches and they've been putting up some good performances as well. You know, at, In between those two victories was a, a narrow defeat, I think, was against Manchester United at Old Trafford, which they deserve to get something out of. So... It's going to be a tight game. Brighton's fortunes seem to be turning around as well, which is a, a crucial stage of the season. Um, I think it's going to end all square in an entertaining match, and I can see it. Not too many goals. I'm going for 1-1. Yeah, I completely, agree. I completely agree with you on this one. I think it's going to be a very close match. Uh, Brighton Southampton doing sort of the same sort of form at the moment, uh, winning the odd game here and there. But, but Brighton... Doing well in the cup, but just not in the league, and I'm going to say 1-1 for that one. Yeah. I think if Brighton do win this match, then you could say they, they're edging closer yeah. to survival. You, you, you know, they'd almost be there, maybe a one or a couple more victories, and they'd be home and hose really for the season and uh, survival. Next up, we have Burnley versus Wolves. Now, Burnley not looking in good form at all. They've lost the last four matches. I uh, don't know what's happening up in Turf Moor, honestly. But um, Wolves doing well, picking up loads of draws recently. Um, but they've had a fantastic season, 44 points, and I think a few, a few weeks ago it was the high, they got to the highest they've ever got in the Premier League, and it was only like March or February that they reached that in, which is amazing. But yeah, I can see this one being Wolves' game. Burnley struggling, can, I think they're going to continue to struggle, and I think it's going to be a 2-0 away victory. 
Mm. Well, this international break has probably done Burnley good, I think. You know, it's, it's given Sean Dice time to reflect and, you know, possibly implement some tactics, you know, take stock of what's happening and really focus on this game against Wolves. Wolves, I know that Neves, I'm sure he played for Portugal in the uh, in the uh, the qualifiers last week and they had a, a couple of matches so and there were I think they you know their other Portuguese contingent yeah. as well played there so in as much I think Burnley they probably focus this is home match and I think they're gonna get something out of this this fixture and I'm gonna go for a one at one draw. Next up we've got Crystal Palace against Huddersfield. Crystal Palace haven't been doing well at home at all this season but they are coming up against Huddersfield. Huddersfield pretty much uh, down you could say now Nothing short of a miracle would get them out of this. You, yeah, you'd have to say Huddersfield are down. But in this fixture, I think the Eagles are going to come away with um, a rare home win, I think. And I'm going to go for a 2-0 win in this one. I, I think in my predictions this week, I haven't actually gone for many clean sheets, and I think, or any, but this is the one possibly... Uh, yeah, this is the only clean sheet I'm going for this weekend, and that is, yeah, Palace to win 2-0. Interesting, yeah, believe it or not, actually, I was reading something earlier, and I think if Huddersfield lose this game, yeah. and I think if Burnley get a point, or I'm not sure how it works, but Huddersfield will be relegated this weekend in March as well, which is quite it's, which is quite a statement in the Premier League, really. Yeah, but only on 14 points as well, they're only winning three games throughout mm -hmm. the entirety of the season. Which is only like three points ahead of the highest, the, the, or the Derby, the lowest ever Premier League team. But... Do I think Huddersfield will get relegated this this weekend? Yes, I do. I think Palace is going to win two 0 like you said. Next up, we have Leicester versus Bournemouth. Now, Brenda's doing doing wonders really there, starting to turn around Leicester. They're playing really well, and yeah, coming up against a really good Bournemouth team as well. Been a bit shaky recently, but with the quality of their players, it's going to be a very interesting game. It's going to be one one for most of the match, I think. But I think Leicester are just going to pull away at the end. Maybe a Vardy goal. I think it's going to be a 2-1 home victory for the Foxes. Yeah, with Vardy, of course, not in, on international duty. Has he retired, I think? Yes, he's retired. From international yeah. duty, of course. That gives him a, a couple of weeks rest recently as well. So he'll be raring to go. Brenda, as we've said, um, he, it, you know, he's got Leicester City, the Foxes, on that managerial bounce where they come in and uh, seem to play a lot better. And I think Leicester are going to come away with victory in this one. I'm going for a free one victory to the Foxes. Bournemouth haven't done well away from home this season. So, yeah, straightforward win for me for Leicester City. Next up, we've got Manchester United against Watford. Man United currently in fifth position. They need to pick up, you know, maximum points, really, if they're going to have a chance. Well, you know, they, they've still got about seven fixtures remaining anyway to get in that top four. Watford have done excellent this season. However, looking at their away form, their recent away form, They've only won once out of their last five away fixtures, and I think that was against Cardiff. So I think they're going to struggle slightly at Manchester or at Old Trafford. And I'm going to go for a Red Devils win in this one and go for 2 1. I think Lukaku might be injured and possibly Rashford, but you may correct me on that, uh, guys. Yeah, Watford pushing for that seventh spot and hoping that um, one of the top six wins the FA Cup so they can get into Europe, really. I think that would be really good for Watford, uh, getting that experience in Europe, but I think Wolves will probably just make it there. They're one point behind, but anything could happen. But anyway, Man United uh, still pushing for the top four, but I can't see that happening either. Um, they're going to try, but yeah, I think... It's going to be a really close match. I think Man United, my, Man United are going to edge it though, and I think it's going to be a 2 1 home victory for the Red Devils. Moving on to the evening fixture on Saturday, we have West Ham versus Everton. Now, two clubs sort of struggling, while Everton starting to sort of turn things around after that, after they had that dreadful form. But West Ham fans not too happy at the moment with the team, uh, watching things like West Ham fan TV and all that. Quality from quality channel, um, yeah. I think it's going to be. I think this is going to be close as well. I think this is going to be one one. Interesting, yeah. I think it's going to be close as well. I think it's going to be an exciting game. I think there's going to be goals in it. Everton in the last fixture, I think they beat Chelsea two 0 so they're going to have confidence going into this fixture. Um, I think Ding might be out injured. Correct me if I'm wrong again. I've been looking at the uh, 
the suspensions and the injuries uh, this week. But uh, West Ham, excellent at home at the moment. I think they've gone seven games without defeat at home. Away from home, as they haven't been too good, but at the London Stadium, they've been excellent. So I'm going to go for an entertaining 3-2 victory for the Hammers in this fixture. Mm -hmm. Next up, we've got Chelsea against Cardiff, or Cardiff against yeah. Chelsea, I should say, on Sunday at five past two. Cardiff, if this fixture had been the week after the West Ham match, then I think I'd have given Cardiff a lot more chance. I know that Chelsea haven't been in the best of form yeah. recently, but like other teams, they, you know, they had this little time to reflect on, on, um, on, on these forthcoming games. So for that reason, I think Chelsea are going to come away with a narrow victory at the Cardiff City Stadium, although I think the Cardiff fans will be up for it as well. They're going to be in, in oh, yeah. good voice, especially after that victory against West Ham. But with Cardiff, I don't think they've picked up a single point against any of the top no, six. Correct. But my heart says Cardiff are going to get something out of it, but my head says, and for this prediction vision, I hate to say it, but I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to Chelsea. Yeah, I've gone exactly the same as you, pretty much just for the sake of the points, really. Um, I think Cardiff do have a chance because of... Oh, definitely. Because yeah. of Chelsea's recent form, especially. And Warnock, he sort of nailed the team he's putting out now, um, playing Camarasa, Uman Niasse... Um, Bobby Reed sometimes as well yeah. playing really good sides really strong bench as well Patterson I think got injured he came think, off yeah. for Scotland similar around with the 35th minute ankle injury but mm. hopefully he'll be okay and it's I'm cost. hearing rumours, rumours I'm not sure if Harry Hart has been injured as well yeah I'm not sure so. but um, one of the players we really need to play is definitely Aaron Gunnison especially when he's confirmed to be leaving for Al Rabi at the end of the season which is just a shame and to be honest they shouldn't have released it till the end of the season shame on Alarabi yeah. shame shame on Alarabi <laughs> yeah well um, Gunnison played against uh, France in that 4-0 uh, defeat when he was playing for Iceland earlier this yeah. week as well so but apparently he yeah, has a really good game uh, getting in there he's probably well, yeah, pro I think yeah, really it was Gunnison against well. Pogba again so, but yeah. France looked brilliant in and apparently um, you got a few tackles in on Mbappe as well like his but yeah, brilliant game. So yeah, 2-1 to Chelsea, unfortunately. Next up, we have Liverpool versus Spurs. Now, this is a massive game in the title race, to be honest. Liverpool, sticky form, but they're starting to pick back up. Well, you could say the same with Tottenham, really. He's really struggling now. Um, and of course, they're moving into their new stadium, finally, as well. What's your thoughts on that one? Uh, it looks a beautiful stadium. I know they had the under-18s fixture yeah. earlier this week. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, all went... Well, I know there was issues with um, the corner, yeah. the corners of the pitch as well because of this little hill or a divot or something. But I yeah. think they've sorted that out now. So uh, no, it's still a hill. Is it? Oh, right. It, yeah. Okay, not much of a run up for the corner takers then. But uh, yeah, it looks like a fantastic mm. stadium, and uh, can't wait to go there. Hopefully next season. For I can't wait either. World's longest bar. They've got all the facilities and everything. Or UK's longest bar, I should say. So. But yeah, they well they're playing away. They played the last game at Wembley for until if they ever try, attempt to win any trophies. But Liverpool, Klopp's gonna have them firing. Uh, Spurs haven't been playing well recently, and it's just gonna be two 0 to Liverpool, I reckon. Maybe more, maybe more, but gotta play it safe for the points, really. Yeah, I think Liverpool's gonna win this one. Spurs is away from recently. I think they've lost their last three fixtures away from home. Liverpool need to keep picking up points, need to keep winning, So, and I think they will at home against Spurs. I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to the Reds in this match. Next up, we've got Arsenal against Newcastle, which is on Monday evening. Newcastle, you know, doing doing well at the moment, and um, picking up points. Yeah. Benitez, you know, the wily old fox there, He's uh, he's got them playing, you know, solidly. Oh, yeah. However, going down to London, Arsenal, superb. They're in fourth position in the table at the moment, last of those Champion League spots. And I think they're going to be too strong. They've got too much quality oh, yeah. for Newcastle, and I think they're going to run out 2-1 victors in this fixture. I think it's going to be 2-1, but I think it's yeah. going to be a comfortable 2-1. Yeah, I think it's going to be comfortable as well. But 
I think Arsenal are going to keep a clean sheet. They've had the chance to sort of maybe sort of a defence. They really need to bring in a defender in the summer, in my opinion. Definitely. They need to tighten up up there. But Newcastle playing really well. Rondon's been on fire. Yeah, I think he scored for Venezuela as well over this international break. As yeah, 2-1 well. against Argentina it was. Very good, yeah. But if, if Newcastle don't sign him at the end of the season, then Mike Ashley has to be thrown out of that club, <laughs> genuinely. Dear, dear. It's abs- reading stuff online is absolutely shocking, but a player who's been playing that well and is loving it in Newcastle, and the owners doesn't even want him. Terrible. But anyway, Arsenal, too much quality. 2-0, one Lacazette goal, and maybe an Aubameyang goal as well. And finally, we have an extra fixture on Tuesday between Wolves and Man United. Um, that's on at 7.45. Now, Wolves playing extremely well, getting the draws, as I said earlier, depending on, of course, that fixture against Burnley. But the main thing about this one is it's a Molyneux and Wolves do amazingly against the top six. So far this season, so far this season well, of course. They and they also well. beat Man United at home as well a few weeks back. They did in the FA Cup, but I think in the reverse fixture, it was a 1-1 draw. Yeah, so Wolves have all the chance here. Uh, to be honest, I think it's going to be another draw. There is definitely going to be goals in this game, 100%. Um, Wolves always seem to score. Him and has been fantastic. Uh, Man United likes a Rashford. Not sure if you'll be playing. Um, but yeah, Man United score loads of goals. Or Man United are scoring at the moment. It's going to be a tight affair. Um, like Either Wolves or Man United could be could be ahead at any point. But I can just see this one being a 2-2 draw. It's going to be too There's close. Been... Yeah, yeah I think it's going to be a draw as well, but I'm going to go for a repeat of that 1-1 scoreline earlier in the season. Going for a 1-1 um, stalemate really in this match. As we said, Wolves doing really well against the top six this season, playing really well. You've got to take your hats off to Wolves uh, this season and they may even push on next season. And Their fans are thinking they could get into the top six, or yeah. some fans anyway. But uh, yeah, so that's... Our predictions for week 32 of this, the 2018-2019 Premier League season. As usual, I'm going to leave a template of these fixtures in the description. And like Jack Williams for the top scorer next week, you could get a shout out in the next video. Before we go, Nathan, anything you'd like to add? Uh, so to my channel, link in the description. I did put a video out for the Wales International game, so go check that out. And of course, we're going to be going to the Cardiff City versus. Chelsea fixture on Sunday, so will you be vlogging then as well? Uh, yes, I will. Video will either be out Sunday or Monday, depending on time constraints. Excellent. Thanks for watching as always, guys. Leave a like, subscribe, all that jazz, and we'll see you in the next...